Well, that's a pretty looking Rebel oh, 300 no, you got yourself you again. right there. No, no, it's not a Rebel 300. It's a, it's an 1100 Rebel. I told you this. So what, like, like a 500 then? No, it, no, no, no. It's, it's a parallel twin. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's bigger. Remember, I told you they came out with it earlier this year, the 1100 Rebel. From okay, the so, twin. so it's a girl's bike then. You got, you got yourself a little 1100 here. It's a girl's bike. Huh? It's. It's not a girl's bike. That's weirdly misogynistic. It's actually probably quicker than most Harleys that you've ridden. Ah, nah, man. I got that 131 big screaming Eagle engine. You can't keep up with that thing. Oh, no, this really can. It weighs like 487 pounds, makes like 85 horsepower. It's pretty quick, I'm telling you. But where's the other cylinder? It's, it has two, it's a parallel twin. Remember I told you that? Well, it's supposed to look like that. It's a V-twin. It's, it's, it's gotta be God, a V-twin to be a God! <laughs> Ah, yes, the classic rivalry between metric cruiser riders and Harley riders, and I bet you're thinking that we're just gonna dunk all over Harley boys again. Well, you'd be mistaken. While that would be a lot of fun, we've beaten that dead horse many, many times, and turnabout's fair play. So today, we're gonna be taking a look at all the excuses that these metric cruiser boys make. Take it away, Spite. <music> Now the first thing I hear Metric Cruiser boys say every time is, well, at least it's not a Harley. Is that a hint of jealousy I hear in there? Surely you thought you were gonna get yourself a Sportster, but hey, the Honda Rebel's gonna fit right in with a line of Sportsters out front of your favorite bar, right? Nah, not even close. Yeah, the only person you're gonna fool in that line is a normie, and one who perhaps isn't looking too hard at your tank. But maybe that's why Honda went with the blacked out logo on there, so you could maintain the illusion for a precious few seconds longer. But hey, it's a cruiser, so you can chop it up, make it your own. I mean, that's the whole reason to get a cruiser, right? Oh, wait a second, I forgot. They don't make parts for this motorcycle. At least not yet, anyway. Hmm, I guess it's kind of hard to be a rebel when you look like everybody else on the road. <laughs> Next thing we hear metric cruiser riders say is that their motorcycles are simply more reliable than Harley Davidson's. Yeah, sure, because every new rider is jumping on a bike and making sure that it's going to be the most reliable thing possible. They're not looking for power or performance or looks, just making sure that they're extracting every single penny out of their dollar on their bike. Sure. Because life is for the living, my dudes, and if living means going out to your local Harley dealership, dropping 30 Gs and a 12.99% loan to get yourself the 131 Power Gister Master Blaster Electra Glide Super Deluxe, well then, go do that. That sounds awesome. Do you really want to tell people to drop 30 Gs on a bike? Yeah, I mean, it's their, their choice. They'll have fun with it. It's that's, fine. That's a lot, dude. I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't do it, but... I wouldn't hey. either, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Now this is one that really bothers me, and it's a great thing that we got the Rebel here in the shop to talk about it. It's when these Metric Cruiser boys say that their motorcycle gets great gas mileage. whoop de doo we're all on motorcycles, man. They all get great gas mileage. Except maybe like the VMAX. You're gonna have a hard time getting 100 miles out of a tank on that thing, but Wait a second, isn't that a metric cruiser? Now, I said I was glad to be next to the Rebel for this one, and here's why. Go ahead, open a new tab. You're fine, I'm not gonna go anywhere, I promise. Now, in that new tab, Google Honda CMX250 Rebel. Pull up the Wikipedia entry. If you've got it up now, you should be, you should by now. Go ahead and check out that second paragraph. What's the first thing they say in the second paragraph? They're talking about fuel economy. Guys, I counted that paragraph. It's 141 words, and all of it is about fuel economy. You can come back to the video now. It's okay, you can come back. You know who cares that much about their fuel economy? Nerds! You're not a nerd, are you? No, of course not. That's why you're on a motorcycle. No nerds! Nobody cares about fuel economy. It's true that everyone wants to get the most motorcycle for their dollar. That's just good business. But Metro Cruiser guys take it to a whole other level. You'll often see them on the internet writing comments about how they got way more bike for the money than the traditional Harley guy. They went down to the dealership, got themselves a 1.29% loan for 86 months. They also got the free gear credit, the tire warranty, all the extra packages, and they even got themselves a free hat too. Look, man, nobody cares that you got your S40 for five grand instead of 56 
700 bucks. Do you wanna know why that bike was so cheap? It's because it's a flaming hunk of garbage and even the sales guy knew that. It's true, it's basically just a long wheelbase DR650. Or maybe you picked yourself up a Yamaha Bolt instead of a Sportster and you're gonna tout the fact that you picked it up for eight grand instead of the Sportster's 9,500 bucks. Well, good luck riding a motorcycle that has literally no character and rides about as good as a beached whale. And just in case you forgot, a Harley Davidson Road Glide is 26 grand and a Yamaha Star Venture is 27 grand. Seriously, I didn't make that up. <laughs> But Spite, my Metro Cruiser has so much more advanced of an engine in it. Those Harleys are all these big, lumpy, air-cooled bikes. It's like a spaceship compared to the Harleys, right? Well, not necessarily. You know, what if Harley was out there making a middle displacement, say a 975cc liquid-cooled V-twin, something that puts down a little bit more power? Maybe it's derived from something bigger, like, I don't know, a 1250 that's putting down about 150 horsepower. Oh, I know what you're saying. The Pan America Spite, the Pan America, it's not a cruiser. Well, the 1250 Custom would like a word with you. Ever since 2015, Harley's been working on modern liquid-cooled engines that have more power and a higher red line. I mean, just look at the modern Milwaukee 8s. Sure, they're still partially air-cooled and they use gear-driven cams for some reason, but they're basically modern engines. But hey, the VMAX is still out there, right? It's so good, it's so powerful, it's so modern, and so out of production. I guess you really should have bought that motorcycle that you wanted instead of that practical bike, hmm? <laughs> But is this is this script right? They they say they prefer quiet exhausts instead of loud ones. Yeah, yeah. Really? Mhm. Mm Guys, seriously, what's wrong with you? You actually want to keep something like this on your motorcycle and you want to keep it all damped and quiet so you don't offend anybody and you don't want your motorcycle to actually make any noises? That's ridiculous. Life is short. Make your bike loud, okay? It's not going to hurt the environment. You're not producing that much more CO2. You can talk to ships like the Ever Given if you really want to talk about CO2 emissions. Make your bike loud. However, if you got a shameful exhaust note like a Vulcan S, then maybe you should just do us all a favor and keep it damped up. Nobody wants to admit it, but when it comes to cruisers, Harley really does set that style tone and leaves everybody racing to catch up. And now you have motorcycles like this with jugs bigger than Dolly Parton and enough chrome to blind an oncoming airplane. But yeah, sure, Harley has too much chrome. Another excuse I hear all the time is that, well, yeah, come on, Harleys just handle terribly. My Metric Cruiser handles amazing. And yeah, sure, the Rebel and the Vulcan are kind of the exception of the rule, but if you look at every other cruiser, the geometry is just fundamentally wrong. None of them actually handle that great. And if you think that they do, you probably need to get your head checked a little bit. Trust me, this is coming from a sport bike guy, all right? So when you look at stuff like the Rebel, you look at stuff like the Vulcan, they are the exception to the rule. Most cruisers just handle like trash, so you might as well get that curb appeal. Now the last excuse I hear Metric Cruiser boys say is that they needed a practical vehicle. Right, because you walked into a motorcycle dealership making sure that you could buy something that you could take your kids to school in, right? No, don't fool me, my dude. I got myself a motorcycle so that I could commute to work occasionally, but really it's a way to have fun on the weekends. And that's what you did. You just don't want to admit it to yourself. And let's be honest, we're not comparing cruisers to big, crazy, committed sport bikes here. We're talking one type of cruiser to another type of cruiser. There's nothing you can't put in the saddlebag of your Yamaha that you couldn't fit in the saddlebag on a Harley Davidson. And there's only one practical motorcycle on this planet, and it's for nerds. And no nerds allowed. You don't get yourself a Versus 650. No nerds. Hey, no freaking nerds. Thank you, Yam. See, no nerds. You're not a nerd, right? Let's stop talking about practicality. Go have fun on your motorcycle. 
All right, guys, thanks for watching today's video. And remember, if you didn't like what you saw and if you're a Metric Cruiser bro, leave me a very detailed comment down below. Write me like a good four or 500 words because I actually read every single word that you guys write. And I actually come up with my own thoughtful analysis too on my own. And so I can come back and with a rebuttal later on to tell you as well. If that's not good enough, you can always sign up to win this Honda Rebel 1100 we're giving away. Despite all the dunking that we did on Metric Cruiser bros, this is actually a very good motorcycle. We are having a ton of fun riding. We'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Remember to subscribe, Turbo Hayabusa or die. Hey there, partner. You done made it to the end of this here Yammy Noob video, but I tell you what, there's another Yammy Noob video right over here waiting for you. Now, I know I'm real gracious like that, and I just do nice things for you, so why don't you take a look at this video, and you let me know what you think.